Welcome to Abundant Darts Premier Talk. I am Pratima Chatterjee. A year of challenges of a disaster, existential changes, a change in social environment. We have almost seen it all and we hope to come out of it more resilient than ever before. We have suffered irreplaceable losses, but we have also gained in some sense. We are wiser and stronger and are once again ready to stand up. The battle hasn't ended as a world community, but on this side of the globe, we are trying to get back to normal. It's time for social contact whilst also not forgetting any of the safety protocols. The pandemic has had a human impact that we never want to forget or devalue. We will build back and build back better. It definitely has added a different layer of engagement and experience. And with this, we move on. On the 17th of May, with the next phase of easing of lockdown, we see the theatres throwing their doors open and welcoming live audiences. The artists can't wait to feel and feed in from the energy of their audience. The stage beckons and the curtains are to raise. It is a momentous occasion for the arts industry. We thought of celebrating this important historical moment with people in the industry in the run-up to the 17th of May. We will peek in the past briefly and most importantly, welcome what is to come. Today we are here at Sadler's Wells. While they are in preparation for the reopening, we speak to their artistic director, Alastair Spalding. You're joining us here today with Abundant Darts Premier Talk. We are very happy to be able to speak to Alistair Spalding, Artistic Director of Sadler's Wells. Thanks very much for joining us today. It's a real, real pleasure to be able to come in, come into the building actually and be able to speak to you. Um, in the run-up to the big event that is coming on, 17th of May, the big day in our diaries, we are all looking forward to Sadler's Wells opening up and for the live audiences to get back in. Well, we can't wait, honestly. I mean, it's been over a year. It's been the longest Sadler's Wells has been closed since the war and even then it wasn't closed this long and um, we're dying to get back with dancers on the stage the audience back in it's only 50 percent to start with mm -hmm. but that's better than nothing uh, and we really want to get back to what we're doing putting great uh, dance from around the world on our stages we've just come across the most challenging year and it has been the most extraordinary journey for all of us how does it feel to finally be here and see the light on the other side of the tunnel? How does it all feel? Well, I think I'd say two things about what's happened in this year. The first is that people have realized how important it is <laughs> to gather, to come together and enjoy things together. Uh, the, the, the importance of art and culture in our lives. When it's gone, you realize how important it is. And the second is that we've managed to maintain a connection through the digital work we've been doing. In what ways do you think the arts industry has still managed to stay relevant in people's lives in the past year? So although we haven't been able to invite people into the theatre, we've taken the work out into their living rooms, on their devices, and in a way we've learned a lot about how important that is and what the reach is and how we can really use that more in the future as well. So those are the upsides of, uh, of this uh, pandemic. If I were to ask you, what were the most difficult decisions or one of the most difficult decisions you had to take last year very quickly and you had to turn around with a solution, what would you say it was? So the most difficult decisions uh, that we've had to make in the last year have been about people that we had to let go because we had to, uh, we had to make some redundancies. And this is very, very sad in, in, the, in any situation. Um, because we just couldn't, uh, we couldn't maintain people because we lost about 80% of our income. So that was very bad and there were colleagues who'd worked here for a long time um, and so that was very difficult. It's been a year where you've had to just keep replanning, you've had to sort of think about things maybe coming back at a certain point but then realizing they're not and then going into second waves and so it's been a matter of really just going with the flow, trying to keep morale up in the in the house trying to keep a connection with our artists and our companies um, 
but it's had some, it's had some very challenging moments. And uh, you, you learn a lot about yourself and about how you cope. And I've been doing a different job in this year. I used to be artistic director more, and now I've been more CEO, trying to just handle this. Yeah. So it's, there's been some challenges, yeah. Are you planning to uh, bring any of them back this year now that you're gradually getting back to normal? Are there any plans? We're, we're not bringing everybody back that we had uh, employed before because we're also not completely out of this situation. Uh, we have a long way to go and this, this year is going to be even more difficult than, uh, than previous years um, because we're not quite sure when people are come, going to come back in full. So we have to sort of gradually build back, but we hopefully at one point might get back to the levels that we had in terms of employment. Would the pandemic change the revenue models of the art venues as a result? Say, for example, most of the revenue would flow in through gate sales or uh, donations, membership, apart from Arts Council England's um, funding. So what do you think, how would, ha would it have affected the revenue model going forward since the past year? So in the immediate uh, thing, the bit we really lost straight away was the audience money. So that was the ticket money and also what they spent when they came here. That's 80% of, uh, of our income. The Arts Council money has stayed the same. And of course, we've had lots and lots of help uh, with Arts Council and government through the CRF to help us along. And what's been wonderful is that the, uh, the fundraising, so the, the donations from our donors and our corporates has stayed not exactly the same level, but has stayed pretty, pretty well. And so that's, all of that's helped us to sustain us. Now, going forward, we just have to gradually build up, get the audiences back in, bring in their lovely people and their persons, but also the money, <laughs> uh, and, uh, and get back to the economy that we used to have. I think it will come back, but it's just going to be a little bit of a journey. Yeah. Uh, with the plans to open the doors to live audiences, how are you planning to manage the social distancing and other COVID protocols, the most important thing of the day? So uh, we're, we already had a practice run at getting people back into the theatre with social distancing. Uh, last autumn it was 30%. We're actually able to go up to 50%. So we space people out and in bubbles uh, in the audience. We're following all the protocols backstage um, and also we're making sure that there's a track and trace system for when people come in. Um, and so we're getting ready to do all of those things. We've had a bit of practice and we're ready really to, uh, to make uh, this all work in the future. Is there any real-time testing on, on the spot? So we, we are waiting for guidance. In, in the immediate, uh, in the immediate um, term, we are just going to uh, look for not any proof of any testing or anything, but because the social distancing is in place, you don't need to do that. Later on, when we get to full capacities, of course, the government are talking about some kind of COVID certification, which would mean either a vaccine, a recent test, or that you'd already had COVID, some sort of proof of that. That's, that's the next bit. That's when we can get back to full audiences. And that is still being discussed because there are issues around it in terms of diversity and equality that we have to be uh, certain and, and confident around. Now, the big question is, would there be a big event from Sadler's Wells for the 17th of May? What are the plans? We're not planning any big uh, uh, kind of uh, party or anything because you, we can't actually have a party. <laughs> we can't actually, we can sell drinks when people are not meant to gather still on the 17th of May. But when we did have the last reopening, it felt like yeah. a party. I mean, although there were less people in the, in the audience, there was a buzz, they were chatting with each other. And then when the, when the performance finished, it was like the best thing in the world. So people are just dying to show their gratitude to come back to enjoy this thing. It will be a party atmosphere probably all through the summer. <laughs> uh, and then, you know, when we get back to proper uh, capacities. We might we might plan something which is a bit more celebratory for everyone that we got through this and we're still here. And could you please run us through some of the events that are planned for the weeks following the 17th of May, all the shows, your flagship performances that are coming back. What are the audiences expecting from Sadler's Wells in the weeks following the 17th of May, if you could talk us through. So we've, we've come back, first of all, with English National Ballet. 
with a program they put together actually in lockdown, so it's all in social distance <laughs> dancing, as they say. Uh, then we have Alex Whitley. He was uh, meant to come last year uh, with his new work. We have a Breaking Convention weekend, so a Breaking Conventions Festival that happens every year. It's happening in July this time around. Ron and that's Bear, your flagship program, isn't it? Breaking Convention. Yeah. Year. Yes, we love the we love that uh, that that, uh, that festival. It's a it'll be in a slightly different form, but that will be there. Ron Bear are coming uh, with the work of uh, Amanda Cabus, um, and uh, and then we're hoping by the summer that we'll be well, we are doing Singing in the Rain. Well, whether it's full capacity or 50% capacity, we don't know. We have our summer show, Singing in the Rain, happening right through uh, July and August. And then in September, we finally have Akram Khan's Creature with English National Ballet. And again, that was postponed from last year. So, and then going further forward, we still have our Christmas seasons on sale. Snowman, Nutcracker, they're actually still on sale. The rest of the autumn program will be announced very soon. The scheduling in the last year has been an absolute nightmare. Yes, and of course, everything from that year has going into the, that year. That year then goes into that year. So we've got a little bit of a backlog, but we're, we're dealing with that. And with the digital stage still continue? So what we're looking at in the future is a kind of hybrid model where we, we continue obviously with the stage work, but we also want to all equally show a digital offering to people because we realized what the reach was internationally particularly. Uh, and also nationally, where people can't come to Sadler's Wells or to London, they can enjoy what we do in the digital frame. So we're looking at keeping as much as we can of the digital offering going, uh, but also obviously have the, have the live as well. If we are to look ahead, what would you say that you have learned from this over the past year that you can take forward with you? Anything unique? I think um, personally, I've learned a lot about how to deal with a crisis. You know, I mean, I think that makes you kind of stronger in the end, although we don't want to go through that very often. Um, I think it's made um, me and Sadler's Wells understand what's important, what is the core of Sadler's Wells. One of the cores is internationalism. And one thing's very sure for me, we want to still take our work abroad and bring companies uh, to, from abroad to to London, it's incredibly important that we have to find a better way of doing it, a more uh, ethical and uh, you know making sure the environmental issues are, are are there. And the other thing which has really been a big important part of this year is the Black Lives Matter issue. And we've been looking at how we deal with diversity and how we do better at presenting the work of black and brown artists going forward, because I think that's something we could really do better at not connected with COVID so, so much, but it's definitely come out of this year. Yeah. So, so there are various things which uh, we can take forward. The digital, also that experience uh, for the organization has been really interesting. So I think we just, we just had it very hard and we're willing, we, what we really want is to be fed again by the artists and the audiences. <laughs> and finally, what would you like to say to your audiences to welcome them back? Well, I just can't wait to see them. I mean, we've missed them. We've missed them so much. The regulars, you know, they've been in touch, they've kept in touch, but really to actually be there in the foyer welcoming people is going to be a real pleasure very soon. Thank you so much for your time. We are really, really pleased that you could find this time out of your busy schedule to speak to us. We are all looking forward to it and see you there on the 17th of May, not too long to go now. Thank you.